Welcome to Seat Time, where we drink beer and talk about all the happenings with motorcycles. Hey everyone, welcome to Seat Time. I'm Jason Schmidt. Jason Schmidt! I'm Brian Pierce. It is good to be back on the couch. I am very glad to be here. Um, I'm also glad to not either be hugging the toilet with my face or my rear, because that's where I was this past weekend. It completely sucked. I got whatever stomach bug that was going around. My wife now has it. Uh, it was horrible. If you're in Texas, don't make out with anybody or touch any of their stuff in their house if they have it. So you guys just stay in the front, okay? Don't make it out with my wife either. Okay, well, plans for the post show are over. Yep. The um, post ratio. <laughs> yeah. No, uh, let's see, this weekend my girlfriend came up from Austin, and our weekends were all about eating, drinking, and World Series. So yes. that was pretty cool. Uh, How about the World Series? Yeah, Rangers are doing well, up three to two. Solid. Going back to uh, St. Louis this weekend. St. Louis. Week. But the interesting part on that is that um, girlfriend is originally from St. Louis, mm. then moved down here later on, and so her two favorite teams are the Cardinals and the Rangers. So this is a win-win for her. But you mean she actually likes baseball? Oh yeah, she loves baseball. That's so weird. No, she loves baseball, but. Um, yeah, so it's a win-win for her, and uh, but I can tell that she'd really rather the cards win it. So. That's awkward. I can yeah. definitely, like, I'm not going to lie. I have watched, I'm being sick and sitting on the couch. I've watched the games, thoroughly enjoyed the games, when the Cardinals won and when the Rangers won. But, man, I just, if it's not postseason baseball, I don't know how people can't, can watch it. Like, it, there's just nothing to it. It is just, like, bunting and slow-er mm. and suckage. It depends. I, some of it I can get into. Obviously, the postseason, since there's a lot more at play, it's a lot more interesting. During the year, though, I mean, 160 games, yeah, it gets a little old. I'm not going to sit there and watch every one team's entire season. you got a better chance of getting struck by lightning than having me do that. But I will tune in for games. watch the great outdoors. The guy has done that a lot. No. No, I, uh, I'll watch just on the specific intriguing matchups, and that's about it. Yeah, well, luckily enough, this show's not about baseball because we don't know shit about it. It is about motorcycles and being awesome, and uh, maybe it's a beer. Nope, definitely some beer. Hmm. One of the things that's going to make anybody more awesome if you have anything to do with motorcycles, beer drinking, or again, holding yourself on a couch but trying not to throw up when the room is spinning, wearing an awesome t-shirt. What was your comment? You want to make sure that people... Don't make it awkward in public, and they, they oh, wear shirts. Gotta, you, can't, you can't go shirtless in public these days, so you might mm, as well get a shirt. Right. Now that everything is all PC-like and you have to wear clothes in public, you should make sure that you clothe yourself in a seat time tee. That's what you want to do. Seattime.bigcartel.com. Not only can you grab yourself one of these wicked awesome t-shirts, you can get yourself a pint glass there as well, so we would really appreciate that. We're getting ready to make a quite a small road trip. Anything helps, please support. It would be freaking awesome. That's the news on our end. News on the other end today was the fact that James Stewart was going to JGR. So, one, staying on a Yamaha. Two, he's going to North Carolina. They didn't ask or anybody specify whether he was going to have to live in North Carolina. That's always been how it's been for every other rider and how it works for their NASCAR teams. So I don't know if he's going to move up there or not. Most likely he's going to. I know he liked Florida a lot. And he loves the fact that his nice cars always look good in the sun. But, so, James Stewart to JGR. What do you got? <laughs> um, well, some of the things that you were excited about, well, one of the, some of the things that kind of struck with you were actually hearing him talk about it and all that fun stuff. It seemed like it resonated with you that he was, he was really... Got, he had really gotten his head behind this, and right. it sounded like he was going to commit himself to it, all that fun stuff. Um, my take on it is that I remember sitting here in our first couple of shows that we ever did where we talked about how you thought that both he and, at the time you were saying, Reed as well, how they'd matured, because in interviews, they, he sounded so much more put together, much more professional, all that fun stuff. To me, it just sounds like he's matured to the point that he knows what people want to hear mm. and expect him to say, and that's great. Uh, there you go. Take a baby step, Hot Rod. But uh, big picture, someone that kind of gave up on San Manuel, Yamaha, or didn't go for the outdoor season, didn't do much of anything, didn't really seem to live up to 
the a lot of expectations in those rounds mm. because he wasn't feeling it. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, come out, bust your ass, do great. Actually, come out, bust your ass. That part sounds good. Don't really care about the do great part or not. <laughs> but because uh, obviously I have other rooting interests. But uh, man, I hope for the best for him, and maybe he will actually stick with it and put forth a solid effort. But man, if history has taught me anything, I'm not gonna buy it. Yeah. No, there's actually there's a lot of good points there as well. He has signed a three year deal with them to ride motorcycles, and then you know within his contract is that he could possibly do NASCAR with them afterwards. So he pretty much you know they have signed a three year deal with Yamaha. They will be riding Yamaha the whole time that he is there, mm-hmm. and he will be there for till 2014. So the, three seasons. Um, I think it says that JGR. I, I agree that they have been building since they began, um, yeah. and now they're ready for a championship. And I think that um, if you know, with Larry Brooks getting either fired or leaving the Sam Manuel team almost in the middle of the Supercross season and not being there, and James Stewart almost kind of having to seem like he's maybe trying to run the team from behind the scenes, that what we've seen with Chad, maybe that could have, maybe that could have yeah. mentally put him in a bad place because he made a good point where it was like when you saw the small differences that him Dungy, Villapoto, and Reed were making when they got comfortable on equipment um, just look at how, how well Villapoto did when he got on that 2012 bike like he just turned a leaf mm-hmm. maybe maybe this could be that for Stewart maybe he has been in an uncomfortable situation I guess like, like he was saying I did mention earlier I didn't buy it when I first saw the press releases and, and read all the tweets and things like that, I didn't buy it. I was like, Stewart has fluffed everybody's skirts so much recently this past year. I didn't, I didn't believe it. But having watched some of the videos and watched the interviews, he looks way more sincere, honestly, than I thought he would. So I, I, I almost now kind of want to take a step back from my previous statements and say, you know what? You now have about two races <laughs> to show me you mean it. Um, and if I, it, it's, you know, I could easily come back to being like, oh, nope, just go back to Bubbles World. I'm not going to watch that, nor am I going to care. So, see, my big thing, and let me get this across too, because I don't want it to be misconstrued. I, I, I have nothing but respect for JGR. Oh. And I think that if there's a team that is going to have everything lined up, know how to run their business, know how to do their development and everything, and give him a comfortable place to be where he can flourish, it's there. Yeah. I mean, and I really don't have anything against him other than I just I despise that show oh god I hate that I mean and that's the that thing that was is, one of my I tweets was, today is I, I was, was like can they make him stop doing Bubbles World like, I, I was middle of the road on him before I mean obviously one of the most amazing writers and everything but that show is it was for me it's like teabagging a food processor yeah, I would I would mm-hmm. much rather do that yeah. I'd much so. rather get paid a million dollars than watch that show oh you yeah. know what I'm saying oh, I mean oh, <laughs> duh I don't know so Big news, though, I think that if if James Stewart turns around and has the seasons that he should have been having, I mean, come on, we got Dungy, who had looked good after two weeks on that KTM at the Monster Energy yeah. Cup. Villapoto obviously looks great, has looked great on that 2012. We got Reed, who, if he can get back into the mental game, yeah. can ride that Honda like a son bitch. Yeah. We got Kennard, who's probably going to be healthy. And mm-hmm. then we got Stewart. So we got... We got all the fun all colors the except Suzuki, back. but we got all the names. Yeah. So well, come on, Alessi. <laughs> yeah. All right. I mean, it's well, a big name spelled with five letters. But... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Damn it, it's six. Well, on to other news, actual racing that has gone on this last weekend. Hey, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Round 10 of the National Hare and Hound at uh, the Long Road Home at Johnson Valley Off-Road Vehicle Area. Mm, desert racing. Yep, yep. Uh, Kurt Caselli wrapped up the championship last week, or Man, hey. the prior series. Yeah. By but the way, because he's, go Caselli. Yeah, because he's awesome. But he showed up out there to get his lounge on and actually helped film footage for Bo Coddington. <laughs> yeah, I know. Oh, wait, Coddington, right? Yeah. When I put that in there, I was like, how do we pronounce this? <laughs> okay. I, would, I know we got the bow part, because it's yeah. like, you know, we're Southern. We get that. <laughs> well, that's the... Oh, yeah. So I understand now, and I'm like, well, which stories do you want to do? You want to do the hair and the hand, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, I understand. The one with the why. unpronounceable anything. <laughs> yeah. But as far as the people that were actually running, uh, Kendall Norman won this one, and so that'll... Uh, taking all three of the loops. Uh, Destry Abbott was awesome, and rolled up in second place for the day, and Jacob Albright... 
<laughs> got a I, I got think another it is photo. Al- Algebrite. I, th- I think I heard when they were talking about him popping the champagne. I think I'm still not positive that I heard him say like Algebrite. Like Ar- 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 Like it's there's an it's two syllables. All right. Oh, no three. I I, I know so, the way around this. Jacob got third. <laughs> Yes. I've been two high fives just in this first episode. This is awesome. Yeah. Or no, uh, uh, story. Uh, yeah, <laughs> disapproval from Jordan. No, uh, Bo's videos. Day, at least. Uh, Bo's it videos show how rough it was out there, and so check them out. Actually, go to our site and take a gander there. Yes, we have up. put Mr. Cotton in, Co- Coddington. How about that? Mr. Bo, <laughs> uh, he's Southern, he's not a mister. We have put Bo's video on our Seat Time website. We would like you to go view it. And, oh my God, I hate spiders. Like, the first 10 seconds of that video was a tarantula. Just like, and I'm like, it's awesome music. But I just peed myself because of the fact that I'm already afraid. So, hmm. thanks for making sure you took advantage of my spider. Phobia. Ar- arachnophobia. Arachnophobia. That is a smart word. Yeah, I'm gonna bust out everything over two syllables apparently today. <laughs> oh, <laughs> one what and is, a half what syllables. What is this? What is this? Uh, that that's a cat, Brian. Okay. Oh, Hellcat. <laughs> Hellcat. It's still two syllables. Is Hellcat? Oh right, you're over still. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What could be one or two words? Huh. I'm not too sure yet. Hmm. Um, all right. So you're gonna wake your. You, you were already in the West for the hair and the hound. Yeah. Hair and hound. Yeah. Maybe you were there just for the hair. I don't know. Yeah. If you found the hound, go you. You probably had a good time. But if you made yourself a little bit more north, you would have been hanging out at Boise, Idaho, and you probably would have seen our friend Dale Spangler from Fire Racing. That guy, pretty cool. Yep. Um, but what you would have seen is you would have seen round six of the Enduro Cross Series. So this, had, this did happen, Boise, Idaho. Um, this track seemed a little bit longer. I didn't get a chance to look at the lap times, but it seemed like it was a little bit longer, like we would have seen back mm-hmm. at Guthrie. You know, Guthrie had a lot more width, uh, length to mm-hmm. it, so they were able to make those longer straightaways. As well, they had features that we typically haven't seen, which would be a double water hole, which any boat will enjoy on a good uh, Saturday evening. Mm. And as well, they had a very, very long rock garden. Typically, you see the rock gardens broken up. Um, the reason why I think they break them up is because that the, they are very freaking technical. Yeah. And the second you put your front tire in the wrong spot, it can just pinball you um, off the track. And so they typically don't, if, and if they do, a put a long one there on the very edge. Yeah. So that way, when you fall off, you fall off the track and not mm-hmm. into another part. Yeah. So the double water hole and the long rock garden, extremely, extremely technical, added a lot to it. Um, I think that it was not much of a shock that Taddy Blazusiak won. I know, yeah, Taddy, what? We've kind of gone back and forth. Can Taddy do the perfect Segan? Is he going to win again? You know, I don't know. Yes, uh, he's going to do it. <laughs> I think it's going to happen. He's got... A double header in Vegas, so we'll see. But he won. He freaking got the whole shot, which from that point he singled or he doubled into the second water hole. So mm-hmm. he just straight up boosted that mother and then went ahead and won. I mean, mm-hmm. Brown yeah. tried to give him a little bit and keep him in sight. Didn't happen. He won. Brown was in second most of the race, but Sule did want to put up a fight, made an aggressive pass on Brown, but then Brown made an aggressive pass right back, walked away with it. Okay, so... Sule, who was trying to get third, wound up tangling up with Webb on the double water hole. So where it became interesting is Sule was singling into the water, but Webb, who wanted to be aggressive, tried mm-hmm. to double into the second water hole. You know what he happened? He done did collided with Sule, and that created quite the interesting factor. Aaron then got around, but Sule was like, you know what, mother? I want third back. And so he got third back. He freaking put his head down without goggles or without a visor, uh, and just, you know, took third and was like, boom, what up? Yeah, boom. So This happened. Yeah, and so Taddy's going into Vegas, which is going to be November 19th, the double header with the perfect 180 points. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got Brown in second, and uh, Sule, I believe, is in third. So Not really surprised about how Taddy's going into this one. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, short of an injury, no one's really hanging that close to I mean, they've... He's been in sight. There have been points where they've kind of they've kind of dusted his back tire a bit, but for the most part, it's or showed him been, their back tire, and then he was like, "Oh wait, I'm gonna pass you." Like, <laughs> oh yeah, I don't know what's wrong with this picture. Oh, there's someone in front of me. Let me take care of that. So wrong. Yeah. So that's not a big shocker. Uh, what was it? 
Okay. All right. Uh, you have it there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, thought process. Yeah. No. Uh, much closer to yes. Strangely, he just saw him run by with a butterfly net. <laughs> <laughs> uh, much closer to the DFW area here, we had uh, the Buffalo Creek Creek Brown <laughs> Buffalo Creek. Yeah. yeah. No. No, yeah, it was the, totally the Buffalo Queef. It yeah, was totally. <laughs> Yeah, that's a horrible video. Don't don't type that into YouTube. Never YouTube that. <laughs> yeah, no. The Buffalo Creek round of the TCCRA <laughs> rolled out, and Buffalo Creek is just north of Canton, Texas, which is kind of east of here. Queefville? Yeah, no, not Queefville. <laughs> and uh, the course there incorporated the majority of the Buffalo Creek MX track. I'm so terrified to say that <laughs> name right now. <laughs> uh, use that entire track out there that makes reference to a buffalo. And uh, it was pretty dusty out there on Saturday. <laughs> Everything around here would have been, but we had some ungodly torrential rain yes. on Saturday night, which, from what I understand and from what Caleb Ramsey had to say, made the course perfect, mm -hmm. which I could only imagine. Mm -hmm. I was thinking about that when I was standing on the patio of my place at like one thirty in the morning, and it's just pouring down. I'm like, wow, I wonder what... Running through different places in my head that were sandy, like... I wonder what this place would be like tomorrow. Bonita. Yes. Yeah, that's the exact thing I was thinking of. Um, no, uh, when the race rolled out, Austin Henderson got the whole shot with Ishmael Ramsey and um, Cheyenne Harmon back behind. Uh, there was some mis uh, first lap misdirection, and Ishmael ended up behind Ramsey. Yeah, and that was kind of weird. It sounded. Yeah, I kind of. It's kind of hard to hear that stuff from the you know other people's mouths, unfortunately. But it sounds like. They misdirected them through the scoring shoot, and somehow Ramsey wound up in front of Ishmael, like halfway through the first lap. So uh, it's but, one of those things that's hard to not being there and seeing it, and just kind of getting different people's accounts and everything. It's hard to kind of piece together what actually. One happened. day we will be everywhere, and it will be amazing. Omnipotent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's good to Jordan have a goal. should know everything. He's been yeah. a lawyer. Oh yeah, exactly. I do know everything. No, oh, right. From there, uh, Ramsey put his head down and made the pass on Henderson and. Uh, Ramsey even had a sketchy high slide to just kind of do something cool for the fans. <laughs> do it for but the fans! Got up, dusted Trying to be himself Todd off. Slavic, that son of a bitch. Yeah, dusted himself off, took off, and uh, ended up taking the win. Um, congrats to Cameron Ishmael on taking the uh, TCCRA championship yep, for the first Euro. one. Yeah. I think that's pretty amazing. He's gotten, he's gotten the Toro one, he's gotten the TCCRA one. Mm-hmm. Getting ready to start Toro up again. I think Caleb wants it back. Hmm. Let's see what's going to happen. I don't know. Um, some other championships that are on the line right now is the GNCC XC1 and XC2. And this past weekend, they were in Crawfordsville, Crawford, Crawfordsville, Indiana, whatever, uh, for the Ironman GNCC. Um, this was a race that Josh Strang needed to win, period. Um, he has lost a mass amount of points to Charlie Mullins just from a lot of bad luck and inconsistent riding uh, after the summer break. Charlie Mullins needed to win just to essentially defend his points lead. Um, it didn't happen. Josh Strang did not win this race. Unfortunately, he had more bad luck. Um, so... The Ironman GNCC typically is like... Not that it's... Not typically a fan favorite. This is a fan favorite race. They love coming out. There's a very big festival atmosphere, but it's typically the last round of the GNCC, and that mm -hmm. is why it's kind of got this big festival atmosphere. But because of all the stuff that happened with Loretta Lynn's this year, and right. now mm -hmm. the rerouting to scheduling and all that jazz, obviously we still have that. That will be our last round. But this, still a good time for the fans. They had a ton of fun. Obviously, we had some good racing. Mm -hmm. um, so, Josh String wasn't up front. He actually was very far behind because of the fact that he broke a peg bolt. Um, and that's just such an odd... Yes. I mean, I'm sure it happens to folks all the time, but just it's not something that's a very... It's not a very top of mind. Yeah, I mean, you go into damage. the pit, and you're like, oh my god, it broke! What? You point... You, ah, the peg bolt! The, pe the what? The, the what? And you know there are people in the crew just like scratching their head like, Damn, do we have one of those? Yeah, it's like <laughs> we make extra. Just grab a, all right, just grab some more pegs. I'm sure that the parts bin runs deep. Yes, but so it comes down to the fact that Mullins as well didn't have that great of a lead to begin with, but he worked his butt off very hard 
um, when he got stuck in a little creek crossing with a bunch of people, he got up front, and from that point, he really only had to contend with Paul Wibley uh, till about midway through the race. And then he that was about it for him. I think he finished with about a 40-second lead over Paul Wibley. So, I mean, he he was moving. So, Charlie Mullins, obviously, when he's if he gets out front, he's going to work for it. So, at Loretta Lynn's, at doubleheader, it's going to be interesting to see how they can recover and they can really uh, pull together. So Paul Wibley did finish second when it came to the checkered flag, but um, there, apparently there was a course infraction. We hear something about a, a creek crossing or a mud hole, and there's a 25-foot rule. It, it is very... Uh, no one has really said much about it. We've just heard speculation from different people. So he, unfortunately, was moved back a spot, which put Paul Wibley in third because of a course infraction, which who was in third, Thad Duvall, Put him in second place. So Thad Duvall now second place for the Ironman GNCC. That is not a bad place to finish. Paul Wibley in third. Not bad at all. So that is interesting in itself. But in the XC2 class, we've got Stuart Baylor who got himself another win. Um, he made a late race pass on Jordan Ashburn who was actually doing himself a lot of good by leading most of that race mm -hmm. for his little Yamaha buddies. But unfortunately, he did not win. Baylor wanted it more. He wants that title. He wants to be like, boom, what up? Mm -hmm. So we'll see. He's going to be a young kid. It'll be good. Um, very, very good performance by Andrew DeLong. He did finish third in the XC2 class, but he actually took uh, Morgan Moss's position on the, the far Husqvarna team. So not only did in the past uh, two weeks race-wise, he switched manufacturers from KTM to Husky. He switched strokes. He went from a two-stroke to a four-stroke. So he... I mean that's that's a big deal. I mean mm -hmm. not just not even if you were just going from KTM two stroke to four stroke. I mean that's a yeah. big deal going from a KTM to a Husky and then as well switching strokes. So way to go, Andrew DeLong. I mean that is that's great awesome. great consistency. He's been doing amazing in the National Enduro Series. He does doing amazing XC two. I really think that next year if he figures out a way to ride that Husky, unlike Morgan Moss, mm -hmm. felt that he could do. Yeah, maybe he could make something for himself. I think it's gonna be really cool. But we got uh, Mullins and uh, Mullins and Baylor looking to make their first both to make their first um, uh, championships respectively in their classes. I think it's gonna be amazing. But we have got uh, Loretta Lynn's double header. You have two races. You have a race on Friday and you have a race on Sunday. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of racing and that's a lot of body recovery. That's a lot of bike recovery. There's a lot going on that could go wrong. I mean, if Mullins breaks something on Friday. Yep. And they have to fly parts in and whatever. I mean, where's his confidence on Sunday? You know, I mean, it could it could be really, really interesting. So, I'm glad that we're going to be there. We're going to be there. Jordan and I are going to make the trip out. It is going to be a ton of fun. Unfortunately, you got to go deal with work business, but that happens. So, we're going to be out there. We're going to be putting on an awesome <coughs> competition on Saturday afternoon after the ATV races. It is going to be fun for all. Come get yourself on a Concept 2 rower. Make it happen. 200-meter sprint and as well as a tire-changing competition. How fast can you put a rubber in a piece of rubber? I don't know. That just sounds actually very awkward. But to go with it, we're going to have some great prizes from all the GNCC sponsors. We're going to have some fun little swag, and we're just going to make awesome. So if you're into any of that, you know, come hang out. Jordan will be there. He'll be the guy making people dance. Awesome stuff. Well, because that's what he does. Yeah. Was that too much? No. No, you're good. No? All right. No, uh, a little closer to home, not quite in the area, but in Oklahoma City, uh, TSEC had their latest round at uh, the Cross Timbers Enduro, which I love that race. I do too. I could only, and I, every time we've gone up to do that race, I've gotten jealous of the fact that the people in OKC have that badass course on the plant and that property by, is it Draper Lake? Ooh, that's a yeah, good question. yeah, it's Draper Lake. It's it's within the city in limits. City limits. That's awesome. A, enough trail there that they can swap out. I can only imagine how many miles of trail they have around that lake to have these swapped out courses for these enduro runs, and it's within city limits. I get I get yeah, jealous of it awesome. every time I, mean, I think about it. And there are, awesome. there are parts of that course I don't. I mean, I'm trying to think of the last time you and I did that it was one two together. Years ago. It, wasn't, it wasn't this year. It was so. It was, it was 2010. Yeah, 2010. Those parts where there is one section of the course where it's just back to back sweepers that you're carving through, just those yeah. side to side, just down the. Down there, that it's like a. It's like it's it literally. So, a, it's a. It's a giant snake run. It's a motocross. Tra it's a badass motocross track in the woods. Yeah. With it is the right kind of non sandy dirt. And <laughs> I am. 
I am not a gentle viewer. I am not fast by any means, but that's the part where I pass people giggling. And I, or I remember, he that just was passes time. himself, and that's fun too. Yeah, I pass people with like no front brake and a flat rear tire in that part, and I was like, "No, oh, it's cool. You're gonna pass me in a little bit. I just like that part." <laughs> Wee! No, but um, one of the things that unfortunately happens a lot at the Cross Timbers Enduro is on Saturday night they got a ton of rain. Yes, so and that happens in Texas and Oklahoma apparently. Yeah, it happens in the quite fall often. only though when we go for no yeah. rain up until. Yeah, no rain of any sort until about this time of year, and then it catches up quick. But it apparently swamped out pretty bad. People are looking around. It, at the point where people are not only worried about, okay, so are we racing? They're looking at their rig trying to think, um, yeah, how do we get, out of, get out of this parking lot? <laughs> I mean, it's a, it's a short drive to the road there too, the way it lays out. But yeah, it, it was apparently pretty bad, but no, the course, um, was muddy, but they were able to go ahead and run the race and a good time was had by all. I'm sure. Yeah. That, was... that Oklahoma sand is definitely, it, it, I'm not going to say it's like Bulger or Bonita, yeah. But at the same time, it definitely it's not that it definitely not sucks that it up. Tarty, It'll take the most kind sure. of stuff either. Too, yeah, there's so there's some goose that, knot, but it's not that's not the typical. Yeah, way it's not as bad it. as some of the other places. But um, Zach Ingram won uh, just over a minute ahead of Dale Rector, and that's pretty close racing when you're thinking uh, about yeah. enduro distance here. Yes. But congrats to everyone that finished because it sounded like a. Sounded like an awesome race. Yeah, I think uh, we had our friend Amber Terry. She oh. said that she got to the 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 what was what was essentially the last check, um, but she only had three more miles to go, and that she was done, done, like yeah. done, 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 no more, and that the check crew started uh, trying to pump her up and cheer her on and get her moving, and she was like, "No, seriously, guys, I'm done." Not only did they keep going, but they yelled louder. She kept going, she finished, and she said that she literally could not have done it if it wasn't, were not for yeah. that check crew uh, motivating her and getting her going. So, And I know Amber. You know Amber. Yeah. Amber's not a give-her-upper kind of girl. No. So she's, just, she's an awesome chick, but hardcore. That's yeah. good work. So I know it was hard if Amber says that she literally was like, one ounce of cheering wouldn't do it. You needed yeah. like eight ounces of cheering, like, yeah. you know. You needed so, your, your daily allotment of yeah, cheering. Yeah, <laughs> I need that. it now. Please and a fast. balanced <laughs> breakfast and cheering and yes. fiber. Strangely wow. enough, yeah. fiber. Well, that's gonna make you move really quick. Mm. But so, and then I get to see pictures of Troy Green's bike, which looks like it gained fifty pounds in mud. And then the next day, he's got it stripped down, no wheels, no subframe. You know, uh, so there was there was a lot of mud. They had to do. Everybody had to do some cleaning. Oh, I could imagine. I'm sad that I missed it, and very happy I don't have to clean my bike. Hmm. Yeah. So there it is. I washed my bike this weekend, so I was there in spirit. Yeah, you're like, ah, oh, dirt, dust. Yes. Looks so awkward. When you have to only use Windex, like you're like, come on. Yeah, I just kind of walked up. <laughs> Done! <laughs> Bitches. I like mm. it. All right, so people are going to go to Ella, Louisiana this weekend is what I hear. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody. Go All to Louisiana. Cool kids. What up? It's all we go hang out, get some trick-or-treat on. Maybe some racing. Yep. Yeah. I don't know. You going to talk about it? Uh, I thought you were, but I'll go ahead. Nope. Um, LACC has their halls Hazard County in Ethel, Louisiana, which is just north of Baton Rouge. What? what? What's yeah. that mean in French? Fra Baton Rouge is French. What does that mean in English? What does that mean in English? Um, don't care. And Perfect. it'll be the second to last round of the series. And so get out there. If you wanted to go check it out, Races, racing in Louisiana is awesome. You've got to do it sooner or later. Get out there and just... yeah. Take in those piney woods and those Realize that trails. Louisiana is there for you to visit and go home. Mm. Take advantage of that fact. As long as you recognize that, Louisiana is awesome. Yeah. As yeah. long as you realize <laughs> yeah. the best part of the trip is coming back home. Yeah. yeah. They don't have bear traps in the parking lot. They're not going to snare you and make you stay. <laughs> in that point, Louisiana is badass. Yes. I'm coming home. <laughs> okay. Well, one place that's still far away from us that uh, I'd rather go to the Renaissance Festival since I can't ride would be the Torx Race that's uh, in Rockney, Texas, this time at the Walnut Creek property, wherever that is. Um I'm looking forward to seeing what's going to happen. We got Martin Heil, who's obviously been doing really well. We got Josh Young, who's the uh, past series champion, and then uh, we got Cole Kirkpatrick, who won the last torch race. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know who's going to win. Obviously biased. So yeah, I mean, I, I know who I want guess. to win, yeah. but we don't know if Cole's going to be out there. Cole might have a mountain bike race. Yeah, I don't which know. Which he has been into. Hey, which has been cool. awesome at as well. Yeah. So, and then Josh Young. 
I don't know you what he does know. for yeah. fair spare time. No. I mean, Martin Hell model airplanes eats people. Yeah. I think he builds those uh, ships in a bottle. Uh yeah. It seems like a good hobby over mountain. Yeah. Dirt biking. Mm-mm. Okay, I will never do that. Okay, so. What you have now watched is episode 39 of Seat Time. Where you can find all this, seattime.co is the URL. If you want to enjoy beer on Facebook with the rest of us, facebook.com slash seat time. That is where you can find us on Facebook. We do all the booking of the face. It is a good time. If you wanted to follow any of our tweets, those happen on Twitter, where tweets happen. Seat Time underscore CO is our Twitter handle. Um, this is actually episode 39, what we would like to call Farewell to Bloody, because of the fact that they've had, he has had some personal decisions that have come up, he has had to make them, and he unfortunately will not be involved with Seat Time anymore, officially. We will see him, of course, next year, a few times, I can imagine, when the good racing happens and shit just needs to get talked about. Or when he just the needs good racing happens. <laughs> yeah. Or when, he just needs Jason's... to come fart on me for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, it's, uh... I'm sure I'll be around a bit when Supercross starts back up, when the outdoor season starts up, but I've got a lot coming up on my plate between work and personal stuff, so I'm going to be doing a lot of traveling. So it's, All I know is I better be invited. Oh yeah, I've got uh, trips to Florida, you India, things like that for work, and then on top of that, there are a lot, there's a lot of personal traveling I'm going to do, some of it with bikes, some of it without bikes, so just a lot more... Uh, obligations of my time so knowing that i wasn't going to be able to commit as much as i would want to to this i'm just going to go ahead and take a step back yep well, we've got bitches. yeah peace bitches jordan and i have been working on this we're still in we're still going to have fun you will not just be seeing me on the couch we have talked to caleb ramsey caleb ramsey will step in within two weeks we are going to take a week break so we're going to get ready for the gncc for the awesomeness competition but he will be on after the first toro and that gncc because he and i are going to discuss what it's like for him to be a pro and me not to be one. I think that's going to be a pretty good discussion. Of course, as well, we will talk about all the other crap that goes on. He's got always got a good viewpoint, good head on his shoulders, and he's a fun kid. So I think mm. it's going to be interesting. We're going to kind of do that for a little while until either we decide that we have found someone to fill bloody shoes or that we just want to keep having people on because, you know, they're way more awesome than I am, but we don't want to admit it. Mm. So there it is. I don't know. Other than that, this is Seat Time. Jordan's awesome. I'm awesome. Bloody, you've always been awesome. So make sure you always enjoy. With us, without us, wherever you're at, a pint full of awesome. Thank you very much. This is 16 ounces. Bitches. See you. I, it wouldn't be the first hand I've had on my junk today. Well, I, need it. I decided I believe, that I, I needed... I can't believe you just outed me like that. <laughs> 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 you just totally went there. Oh, <laughs> boom! Yeah, I realized earlier today I need to find a less attractive doctor when she was like doing the testicle <laughs> check, and I was just like, "Man, I know this will be over in about ten more seconds. If it went a lot longer, I'd worry about blood flow." <laughs> 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 All right.